Our next guest has a very interesting take on just how difficult it is to crack into the property market in 2023 compared to 40 years ago. This is fun. Take a look. Let's go back in time to buy a house. In 1983, I'm an average person looking to buy an average house. I got this average degree, which I got for free, and work an average job. After paying tax and rent, I have... If I save 50% of the remainder, it take me two years to save up for the 20% deposit. Remember that as we head back to 2023 and I'm still an average person looking to buy an average house, oh no. got this average degree, oh no. and I have an average job. Oh no. After paying tax, rent, and hex, I have... Oh no. If I save 50% of the remainder, it take me 10 and a half years to save up for the 20% deposit. It's clear that it's not just lazy, layabout young people sipping latte. That's causing the problem. It would take me 84 years to save up enough money if I skip having a latte every day just for the deposit. I don't have 84 years left. <laughs> 84 years. I, I mean, it's funny, but it's also disturbing. It and is, then it's funny it? again. <laughs> That's right. Well, the, he's broken it down for us so simply there. Let's welcome the content creator behind the video, Jack Tui. G'day, Jack. Jack, you've G'day. really crunched the numbers and made sense of it all for us. Yeah, well, I mean, I got kicked out of my maths class in year 10 <laughs> um, and I never went back. But for some reason, it's taken me to do the maths. Uh, as a as a maths dropout to figure this out for everyone, but I'm I'm happy to be here. Thank I, you. I do. I did maths in society as well. Um, I hated maths. I, can, and I, I don't think I did very well in it. Terrible. Um, but, but applying that that maths at a mm. rudimentary level, um, and it's pretty quickly um, you get to the conclusion that it's so tough at the moment. What is your personal experience with the property market? Uh, I gave up on um, having a realistic chance of buying a property probably like five years ago, mm. um, and decided that. You know, maybe renting wasn't so bad after all. Um, I ran a business for eight years and even still, as a successful person in society, it wasn't really something that I fully ever truly believed that I could be a part of it. So, And then rents have gone up and mm. then you get squeezed at both ends. Yeah, exactly, and I've moved back to my parents now. So, oh, how is that? And what's that transition like for you and them? Uh, look, I'm very lucky. I'm in a very pri privileged position that they're able to, A, take me, have the space, and I like them. Um, I think they like me as well. <laughs> now, I'm really? pretty sure it's not all just my mum watching the video on TikTok. Cause I don't think she has enough hours in a day. Um, no, no, it's really good and I'm in a very privileged position. So I have the time, I have the space to do crunch these numbers, which, as I say, probably someone in year 10 could have crunched. Um, and that's why I'm kind of making these videos What's now. the solution, though? Mm. Well, I have a lot in my little book here with lots of solutions. Um, one of the main things that I think that we really need to have a serious conversation about is negative gearing. Capital gains tax, that costs $16 billion to the budget every year. Uh, comparatively, the current policy is to spend $10 billion over five years on 30,000 homes. Mm. So that doesn't really <laughs> stack up here. Yeah. And it's not mum and dad investors either. It's, you know, 85% of that $16 billion goes to ten, the top 10% of earners there. Yeah. So, yeah, it's not mum and dad earners that are going to miss out on, on most of the money that we're losing that we could be spending on affordable public housing. Good place to start. Good to see you. Yeah. More suggestions coming your way. And uh, check him out. It's very funny and <laughs> interesting and disturbing. Backflip from the New South Wales government this morning with the Premier confirming he's abandoning a key election promise of ending secret rent bidding. Today, Sydney reporter Gabrielle Boyle has more. Gabby, good morning to you. What does the Premier have to say? Good morning, Carl. Well, when the New South Wales Labor Party went to the state election a couple of months ago, back on March 25, they were making some really key promises to voters about the rental crisis. It's a big concern here in New South Wales. There's very little stock on the market and it is incredibly expensive, putting heaps of pressure on people trying to rent a property. What they were promising voters is that they would end secret rent bidding. But last week, a bunch of experts in the field... So rental experts, real estate experts and economists all sat down to advise the state government and what they said was this particular bill wouldn't fix the problem. In fact, it could make it worse. So Chris Min says he will be dropping this part of the bill. Exactly what his government plans to do about the rental crisis here in New South Wales, which no doubt still has voters very concerned, remains to be seen. Gabby, thank you. Welcome back to the show. Effie Zahos joins us now. Our mortgage pain right across Australia, Effie, right now. Absolutely, and I think this will definitely be the straw that breaks the, the camel's back for mm. a lot of homeowners now. Um, you know, maybe you could have juggled it. Some data that's come out this morning by RFI Global is concerning because it shows the savings kitty is dropping. Mm. Over the past six months, whether you've got a mortgage or whether you don't, maybe you're at home because you're under the 35, maybe you're renting, 
the under 35s are doing it the most. They've found that their savings just in the last six months have dropped over by four thousand dollars. Mm. Once you get that, you know, your cash out of your reserve, your cash account, you're treading in dangerous waters. So that was interesting. This data had come out this morning that people's savings had been depleted because of the cost mm. of living and mortgages. Are there any emergency strategies for those out there? Yeah. Okay. So, so what what will happen now is that a, a, a whole lot of homeowners will start thinking, this is the last one. I can't handle this. Mm. So the hardship clauses will come out. These are the calls you need to make. These are emergency strategies and you can talk to your lender about it. If you go interest only, you could pocket back $381 mm. per month. That will at least cover this last rate rise that is we that just saw. Is that easy to do, just um, flick over? Oh, it is, yeah. absolutely, yeah. Um, and these are strategies your banks will have under their hardship clauses. I mean, the last rate hike just yesterday will meet $100 on the average mortgage. So that gives you some of those back. Intr increase your term, again, that will give you some money back. But guys, these are emergency strategies for the mm. reason that they could cost more in interest in the long in the term. Long run, yeah. But I guess for homeowners, you're, what they're looking for now is what can I do to get through the next 12 months? Exactly. Right. Yeah. Welcome back. Well, the Reserve Bank is warning struggling mortgage holders to expect more pain to come after the RBA hikes interest rates to an 11-year high. Joining us to discuss today's headlines is Queensland Senator Matt Canavan and editor of Stella Sarah Lamarquin. Thank you both for your time. Matt, this is the 12th rise in 14 months. Why do you think inflation is so persistent? We're not seeing it budge very much. Well, I think one of the reasons is because government keeps spending so much of your money. Uh, the basic rule here is the more that Canberra spends, uh, the higher the prices go in your shops. And we've seen the new government come in and, yes, you know, we had to spend a lot during COVID and that's obviously contributed to the inflationary pressures. But the new government's done really nothing to rein in spending. In fact, their budget last month uh, increased government spending uh, at a higher rate than any budget, notwithstanding COVID, since the Kevin Rudd stimulus years. And that's just not what our economy needs right now. We don't need a massive stimulus like we needed in the global financial crisis. The government needs to be doing more here to apply the brakes uh, to help the Reserve Bank get down inflation. But instead, it seems like the governor of the Reserve Bank, as much as I've criticised him and others have, he's about the only one on the field actually putting in the effort. And Jim Chalmers just seems to be making excuses uh, that this is everyone else's problem without recognising the fact that he's actually the treasurer and he could help and make decisions to ease the pressure on Australian homeowners. Gee, it's a tough one, Sarah, isn't it? Because you kind of want to look after those who are on low incomes to get through the really high cost of living at the moment. I mean, this rate rise is going to hurt them. How do you not assist them? That, that's exactly what I was thinking about this morning. I mean, it, it's just such bad news that Australians are waking up to again. Yeah. As you said, Sarah, it's the 12th rise since April of last year. It is definitely not cheaper by the dozen. And as we've discussed on this mm -hmm. segment many times, the flow-on effect is really bad. You've got people that have to accept they're never going to be able to buy into the yeah. market. The impact on renters. I mean, anecdotally, there's people in this country living in their cars in capital cities. So all of that's unacceptable. But as you say, how do we balance that with the cost of living, which mm. is such a hot button issue for so many Australians. I mean, we know that the inflation rate is sitting very close to 7%. It's yep. meant to be between 2 and 3%. So there don't seem to be any easy decisions here. And that's when it feels impossible when we do know that the RBA is trying to reduce it down to that 2 or 3%, Matt. It feels like that's impossible. I mean, you mentioned before, obviously, the previous government having to deal with COVID, but what would you do differently this time around? It's, it's a tough call. Well, we shouldn't be increasing our welfare spending by 10 per cent in one year. That's what the government did there, last though, month. That's the thing. Increased the, well, we can't increase spending by $25 billion a year. It's, a, it's robbing Peter to pay Paul because that increased spending is going to add to inflationary pressures. This is effectively the second interest rate rise since the budget, the one the week before the budget, I'm sure, was in anticipation mm. of what was coming. Uh, so yeah. the, this is directly on the government's hands here because of their decision to increase government spending the Reserve Bank has no choice but to act. Yeah. And as I say, it's about time the government take the inflation crisis seriously. We need to get government spending under control so we don't have inflation at 7% for the long term. Matt, you're pushing nuclear today on that board behind you. We saw <laughs> on the front page of The Australian that BHP is also <laughs> talking up nuclear. I mean, could that alleviate some of those cost of living pressures? Well, uh, we need more. We need reliable power, and and the, the one of the one of the other inflation, big inflation pressures right now is your energy bills going up, and it's getting worse, not better. Uh, last month, New South Wales wholesale electricity prices were the fifth highest on record, 
and we need to replace the coal-fired power stations that are shutting. And nuclear is an option that's used right around the world. In mm. fact, we're the only continent, uh, only settled continent that doesn't have nuclear energy. It's us and the penguins without it. Uh, we've got all this uranium, and it's great to see a big company like BHP seeing sense here and trying to talk sense to the government. Uh, apparently, they approached the government uh, more than a month ago about this idea, yeah. and we've heard nothing uh, from the government about why they're not looking at this option that's used all around the world. Hey there, today fans, Sarah and. What's my name again? Oh Carl. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching our YouTube <laughs> channel, though. Subscribe now for more news, special reports, and amazing Aussie stories. And Carl misbehaving, Whoa, of course. That never happens. Always happens. What's she talking about?